The last type of plotting example we want to look at has to do with doing 2D and 3D plots. The signals we've plotted so far have been to sines and cosines, they've been functions of one variable time. So we could have an x-axis that was time and a y-axis that was basically amplitude of the sinusoid. When you deal with functions that are a function of more than one variable, you have to use different plot types to visualize them. And that's what we're going to do in this example. So we are going to actually query a function that's a function of both x and y. So I'm actually going to create the vector x and create the vector y. And then I'm going to use this mesh grid command. x is a length 41, y is a length 41. Mesh grid takes all combinations of x and y and puts them in this matrix x and y for us to use. So you can kind of think of it as just defining the x-axis and the y-axis and then mesh grid gets all combinations of x and y so that you can evaluate the function over kind of a spot in the two-dimensional plane. So the function we're going to evaluate is this function here. It's x times y times e to the negative 2 x squared plus y squared. So this is just kind of a nice, smooth, and well-behaved function we'll see here when we visualize it. And it but it is indeed a two-dimensional function because I have to give it a value of x and a value of y, two different things, and then it spits out an amplitude z. So let's start with an empty figure like we usually do, and then the first thing that we're going to do to try to visualize this function is by using the mesh command. So the mesh command creates things that look like this. So here is our x-axis, here is our y-axis, and this is our z-axis, and the mesh basically makes this mesh surface that we can look at to visualize what this function looks like. So by looking kind of top down like this, we can see for certain values of x and y, we get a large value of z, we're on kind of a hill, and for certain values of x and y, we're in kind of a, a valley here, kind of this hole, we get small values of z. But this is what this function z looks like as a function of x and y. Many of the same commands we've been using, we can use here, we can use xlabel, to label the x-axis, and we can use y-label to label the y-axis. So this is one way to visualize a two-dimensional function as this kind of three-dimensional mesh. Another way to do it is with the contour command. So let's start up a blank figure again, and this time instead of calling mesh, let's call contour xy. So what this does is it basically gives us a contour map. So this is a 2D plot. There's an x-axis and a y-axis, and we can label those just like we've been doing. And this looks very similar to our mesh plot. In fact, if I bring them up here side by side, we can see that when I rotate this one, I almost get out something that looks very similar to the contour. I've got red here and blue here. But this contour map is basically kind of like a contour map of real maps, and these lines indicate whether things are going up quickly or going down quickly, and the color indicates whether it's a high value or a low value. But this plot, I can't rotate it because it's just a contour plot. It's completely flat. Okay, I can still rotate it. There's just no more information there. So contour plots are another way to kind of visualize what's going on on some uh, two-dimensional function. Another way to do it is with just an image command. So let's start up a blank figure. And let's just call this function image sc. That just stands for scaled image. And we're going to plot x and y. And for those vectors, we're going to plot our function z again. So I gave it an x and a y. So this is very similar to the contour plot. Let me pop those back up. Very similar. The difference is we're actually plotting this as kind of an image. And there's basically the pixel values here are the x vec vector and y vector. And the color indicates the value for z. In fact, if I turn this on, we can see that the function z peaks up around 0.1, and deep blue is about minus 0.1, and that corresponds exactly with the first plot we made on our um, mesh plot. If I zoom out here, we can see that this peaks up pretty close to 0.1 and goes down to minus 0.1. So all of these are you know, very different ways of visualizing the information. Depending on your application, you might prefer one over the other. But this just gives you a little taste of different ways to visualize higher dimensional signals in MATLAB.